Now we're going to learn about the tributary area and in your engineering notebook I want you to find this page that has the title being tributary example and I want you to glue it into your engineering notebook and at the top you're going to put 3.2.2 beam tributary example. So I'm going to pause and let you catch up with me and then we're going to talk about this. Okay so we're going to need to label some components here in this roof and this is a roof if you were looking down on it from above and there's three actual parts to this you're going to look at this and you're going to see uh, these little letter I's there is uh, four eight twelve of them in total right here I'm going to just circle one of them and we're going to label that as what it is and that is a column C O L U M N so those are columns the other two things we need to label on here are uh, these lines right here these are beams so all the little the lines that run horizontally those are beams and beams are supported by girders and girders are these vertical lines these four lines that we have in this roof plan right here so I'm gonna write uh, I'm gonna label this one as a girder so now we know what all of these things are. All right, let's look at what the tributary area is. If we have a beam, like I'm going to highlight this beam right here, this one right here, if we have a beam that has a uh, a support that goes across right here this is this is about halfway down to the next beam and also halfway up to the beam above it okay this is what's called the tributary area now the distance from here to here is three feet four inches and that's because our width from beam to beam is six feet eight. So half of this would be three feet four. It's also three feet four from the beam to halfway down in this uh, span. So three feet, feet, three feet four and three feet four gives us a six foot eight inch tributary area of this. So what's going to go on here is any force that gets applied right here in this span halfway to the uh, beam that's above it that force is going to go back to that beam. Same thing all the way along here. Now up above, halfway up this one, the force is going to go down and it's going to go into this beam that's right down here because they're going the force is going to be evenly distributed. So this six feet eight is going to be a number that we're going to be using to calculate the tributary area of that particular beam. Okay, so right here, this six feet eight inch distance, that is referred to as the tributary area. And 
we now need to calculate how many square feet there are in this tributary area here around this beam. Now the formula for doing that is going to be down here. I'm going to write this uh, tributary area. is going to be equal to the beam span beam span and that is going to be times the tributary width now when we look at our tributary width here it's in six feet it's in six feet eight inches this has to be converted to a decimal so you do that by taking our calculator and we're going to take uh, eight inches we're going to divide that by 12 because there are 12 inches in a foot and we get 0.66 repeating so we're going to round that to two decimal places so we're going to make that six point six seven feet the beam span is 18 feet right here so there's no need to convert anything so 18 feet and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the 18 times 6.67 so 18 times 6.67 that's going to give me 120. 120 feet squared. So the tributary area for this system is 120 feet squared. What that means is that that beam is accounting for 120 square feet of space above it and it's taking that load and supporting that load.